Welcome to the fourth episode of our video series on cattle farmer training, brought to you by the Karen Beef Academy. This video series will not only give you a good understanding of cattle farming and what needs to be taken into consideration, but will also assist you in becoming more profitable and sustainable as a cattle farmer. We will cover a wide range of topics throughout this series, aimed to inform you on best practice and enlighten you on some new techniques. We will also shed some light on challenges facing cattle farmers and how to overcome them. This episode covers the key questions regarding fertility. The why, what, when, and how much to feed your animals to ensure optimal fertility. Fertility is influenced by factors such as genetics, animal health, stress, nutrition, and management. For good reproduction, the main aim is to have the animals in a good body condition and generally healthy. The farmer must supplement to prevent any deficiencies when there isn't enough grass to sustain the herd adequately. Health and nutrition go hand in hand. This means that you cannot feed unhealthy animals and expect good reproduction. Unhealthy animals are those that are infested with internal or external parasites and are sick. On the other hand, mismanaged feeding programs can result in rumen disturbances, making your healthy animal sick. It is key to understand the cow's nutritional needs during the different phases of production, such as breeding and calving and also the seasons. The standard supplement program can be summarized as follows. In summer, there is ample green grass with enough protein and energy, but the minerals will be deficient. Thus, you will need to supplement with a phosphate block or mixing a P12 with some salt. In autumn, temperatures start dropping, the grass is seeding and quality is declining. During this period, you should allow the cows to become accustomed to winter leaks next to the phosphate block. During winter, grass quality has declined completely and become high in fiber. You need to supply a protein leak to help the cow break down the grasses. In areas where the grass has been burned, you will need to supplement with hay and possibly drought pellets as well. Springtime is when the grass is starting to regrow, but there is still not enough green grass to keep the cow fully sustained. You will need to supplement with an energy and protein leak or production leak to overcome this leak. Production leaks can also be fed when the cow has calved, especially during autumn and early spring. This will prevent excessive weight loss and help her to start cycling sooner. Cows that are in good health and body condition will bear a heavier and healthier calf. The bull you use can also have a significant impact on your herd fertility. It does not matter whether your cows are in good health and on the correct nutrition plan. If the bull is infertile, he will not get cows pregnant. It is important that your bulls are fertility tested at least six weeks before breeding. However, this is not always practical and you can set up some insurance by adding more bulls to your herd if you are not able to fertility test. The ideal ratio is 20 to 25 cows per bull when the breeding season is limited to three months. If the bull is running with the cows all year round, the bull to cow ratio can be increased to 40 to 50 cows per bull. If you are not fertility testing, then aim for 40 cows per bull to ensure a better calving percentage.
There are about 40 cattle breeds that farmers can select from in South Africa. They differ in frame size, build, adaptability to different climatic and production environments, resistance to pests and disease, reproduction, parenting abilities, meat quality, and carcass yields. When the farmer is looking to select a breed best suitable for his environment, the farmer needs to know his environment. Consider the quality and quantity of the grazing and the seasonal variation. Small to medium framed cows are more suitable to conditions where grazing is sparse, of poor quality or highly variable. Check what the climate is like. In a region or environment where both the humidity and heat is high, a smooth coated animal with plenty of skin area is more adapted. However, sunburn also needs to be considered. Here the animal needs to be fully pigmented, especially around the eyes and nose. Where there are loads of parasites, such as ticks, flies, and midges, Animals that are smooth coated and have a twitchable tough skin are more suited. These animals will also need to be more resistant to any diseases that are carried by these vectors. Decide what breed or breeds have the most potential. It also needs to be taken into consideration that individual animals within a breed will also vary based on the production conditions or genetic and physical makeup of the animals. When selecting a breed best suited to his environment, the farmer also needs to identify which animals or breed will produce and generate the greatest profit at his marketing endpoint. Another factor to consider is identifying the cow type or breeds that best suit your production systems. Whether it is a winner system where calves are sold directly after winning or an oxen system where all calves are kept for one to three years and then sold with heifers that are not selected as replacements, the ultimate goal is to replace the current generation of cows with daughters that will outperform their mother to maintain genetic progress. To ensure the head is adequately adapted to the current environment, the farmer will need to select replacement heifers or breeding cows that are performing better than their friends in the same environment, which should ensure that their offspring will perform under the same environmental influences. Crossbreeding involves the mating of individual animals from different breeds allowing the farmer to take advantage of the hybrid vigor. Hybrid vigor or heterosis can be defined as the tendency to show qualities that are the best of both parents or the increase in performance or function above what is expected based on the parents of the offspring. Hybrid vigor also allows for production traits with low heritability, such as fertility, which is significantly influenced by the environment to respond more favorably, which is the biggest advantage of crossbreeding along with higher net return and profitability. Examples of crossbreeding include two breed crossing. For example, where a Brahman bull covers an Angus cow and produces a Brahman's offspring. A three-way cross example would be taking a Brangus and servicing her with a Simantola bull, thus obtaining the hybrid vigor by crossing Boss Indicus with Boss Taurus. The advantages of hybrid vigor or heterosis will be optimized when the farmer selects the breed or individuals to create a crossbred cow herd that will fit the farmer's resources and production goals. Breed complementarity is another advantage of crossbreeding. This involves the evaluation of the strengths and weaknesses of the potential breeds and the selection of breeds that will complement each other best. There will be a better chance of the offspring having the best traits of those breeds. 
These trades are based on the farmer's goal of the cattle operation or where the herd will require improvement. For example, more milk, increased winning weight, or correcting the structure of the cow herd. Breeding objectives and breed complementarity needs to be kept in mind when using different breeds in a cross-breeding system based on each of the breed's strong points. For example, fertility, maximum growth up to winning and afterwards in the feedlot, as well as the breeding of heifers for replacements in the cow herd. Beef cattle and production systems can run intensively and extensively. The key to reach optimal performance while keeping your costs of production low is matching the fodder requirements of the herds on the farm to the forage produced on the farm. It is crucial to follow a well thought out fodder flow program, especially around the 100 day period around calving. The last 30 days of gestation and the first 70 days of lactation. The first step to planning your fodder flow is to understand your stock flow and by estimating the correct stocking rate. The carrying capacity of the farm should determine the herd size and can be calculated using the fell type and farm condition. The next step is to draw up a table of all the animals in each productive system and reproductive category for every month of the year. That will set up an estimate of the total number of animals on the farm. The farm can then estimate the herd's total body weight to calculate the dry matter requirements for the year. Fodder flow is the total fodder available from each source on the farm such as felled, pasture, and stover for each month of the year. The fodder flow should ideally match the required feed for the total head. However, this rarely happens and matching the fodder production to the fodder requirement may only be achieved by adopting the following methods. By altering your stock flow through strategic culling or carving producing more feed at particular times or transferring extra fodder from one time of the year to another. If the farmer cannot force a match, nature will do so through the loss of production and reproduction, loss in live weight of the animals and ultimately the loss of animals through selling. Other management strategies for good head fertility and reproduction will also involve selecting and selling unproductive cows or, as some call, passengers. A productive cow can be classified as a cow that will produce a calf every year. To monitor your fertility and the progress of your head, you must record how many calves are born in a specific year. This will enable you to decide on how many heifers you need to raise as replacements for the cows that are sold as unproductive. Your commercial success can be measured by calculating how many calves are sold in a year against how many females you own. According to industry experts, fertility is five times more financially important to the beef producer than growth rate and 10 times more important than carcass quality. Calving rates are the best and most commonly used parameters to gauge reproductive performance of cows or a herd. Although data is limited, research by veterinary surgeon Dr. Latisha Godex of Haberon suggests that the average communal calving rates in Africa are 34 to 40 percent. Her study details the average calving rates in various areas within South Africa as well as elsewhere on the continent. It shows that while the South African commercial sector boasts among the top calving rates at 61%, the communal sector is far lower at only 23%. With this calving rate being so low, it shows how much potential you really have as a cattle farmer in South Africa 
And with a systematic approach, your covering rates will improve to your financial gain and commercial success. Thank you for watching. We do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please follow our social media channels for more and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to access the other videos in this series. Until next time, goodbye.